Welcome to the new summary for day 364 on the war in Ukraine. You are listening to the account. Thank you for tuning in again today. Today I do not have an extra segment. All updates are grouped into the usual situation inside Ukraine, including an interesting interview with Budanov and updates on arrests made in Ukraine, the occupied territories, with information on last night's explosions in Mariupol, Russia and Belarus, including updates on the Lushniki Stadium concert, and international developments, with updates on aid to Ukraine and the newest sanction dispute between Hungary and the EU. But first, the flashpoints along the front. Kremina. Russia is focusing its attacks towards Torske and the forest south of Kremina. While Russia is making small gains, a decisive breakthrough is yet to happen. The head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, Seri Heide, said that Russian units attempted a breakthrough in the Kremina direction, but had no success. Bakhmut Russian units continue to try to break through Ukrainian defenses. Especially heavy attacks are reported from Berhivka and Yahitne, but so far they have no success there. Heavy fighting is also reported in the eastern outskirts. There have been claims made by DPR officials that fighting is already close to the center and a Ukrainian surrender is imminent, however those claims are simply ludicrous. Even though the situation is dire, I highly doubt Ukraine will surrender while not even being fully encircled. Further south of Bakhmut there has been some movement around Kodiumivka again. Ukraine reported repelled attacks. And now a look at all the minor news out of Ukraine. In an interview with Forbes, the head of the main directorate of intelligence of the Ministry of Defense, Kirill Budanov, said that the defense of Bakhmut is holding back the Russians and causing them catastrophic losses. Commenting on the increasing numbers of fires on the territory of the Russian Federation, he simply said, money works wonders. Much of this is not a coincidence. Something is constantly burning. The signaling equipment on the railways, it burns several times a day. On various highways, constantly for two to three hours, sometimes for five to six hours, the traffic is stopped in the entire section. It is clear that it doesn't just burn like that, Budano further said. He also commented on other issues. The Russian offensive is already underway, but it cannot be seen due to the performance of Russian forces. Russia mobilized 316,000. Now they want to mobilize 500,000. If all is well, why would they need to? Only one conclusion, the losses are sky high. As the three biggest losses Budanov named Severodonetsk, Volnovakha and the losses in 2014. The three biggest victories are the defense of Kiev and the counter-offensives in Kharkiv and Herson Oblasts. Vadim Skibitsky, deputy chief of the main directorate of intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, said that since the beginning of February, Russian troops have started offensive actions in at least four or five directions in Ukraine, but they do not have strategic nature. Law enforcement officers have detained pro-Kremlin blogger Dmitry Skvortsov, who was hiding on the territory of a monastery of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Moscow Patriarchate in the city of Kiev. Meanwhile, in Vinitsia, a Russian agent was arrested who actively recruited mercenaries for the Wagner PMC. The Ukrainian Prosecutor General Andriy Kostin said at a press conference that the International Criminal Court's investigation of Russian war crimes in Ukraine will be published this year. Colonel Yuri Inat, spokesman for the Ukrainian Air Force, said that Russia has increased its use of tactical aircraft along the Eastern Front. President Volodymyr Zelensky plans to attend the July NATO summit in Vilnius in person, Petro Beshta, the ambassador to Lithuania, said. Next up, the latest regarding the situation in the occupied territories. Last night, explosions were reported in occupied Mariupol. A Mariupol resident confirmed the claim and mentioned he heard 10 to 11 explosions. 
Initially, the Mariupol City Council reported that a warehouse near the airport in the AS-2 area, Central District, and a military base in the Stan 3000 area, Kalmius District, were hit. Later, Petro Andriyoschenko, the advisor to the mayor of Mariupol, reported on Telegram that warehouse number 3 on Pier 18, which allegedly housed an ammunition depot, was also hit. Following the explosions, it was reported that this morning Russian airplanes were recorded flying over Mariupol. The National Resistance Center has reported that the humanitarian crisis is intensifying on the Crimean Peninsula, temporarily occupied by Russia. Especially a growing shortage of medicines for civilians in Crimea can be observed. The use of medicine is prioritized for the needs of the Russian military. Moving on to the news update from Russia and Belarus. Russia carried out a test of the Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile around the time US President Joe Biden was in Ukraine on Monday, February 20, 2023. The test appears to have failed, according to US officials familiar with the matter. Russian President Vladimir Putin revoked a 2012 decree on Russia's foreign policy course that suggested that Russia would develop closer relations with the EU and the USA and respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries. In particular, the decree of 11 years ago envisaged that Russia would continue to actively search for ways to resolve the conflict in Transnistria with respect to Moldova's sovereignty, territorial integrity and neutral status. A curious incident occurred today in Russia. In the morning, radio announcements of an air raid warning and a missile strike threat were made in 10 Russian cities. Later, the Russian emergency ministry said that it was a hacker attack. The administration of the Russian city of Vladivostok handed over sausages, canned food and pate to the wives of Russian soldiers killed in Ukraine. Yevgeny Prigozhin, head of the Wagner PMC, has published a picture allegedly showing over 50 dead mercenaries, claiming lack of ammunition is the reason they died and blamed it on the Russian Ministry of Defense for withholding ammunition. I advise not to check the source link for the picture as it is rather disturbing. Today, the Glory to the Defenders of the Fatherland concert took place in the Lushniki Stadium. During his speech at the Glory of the Defenders of the Fatherland concert, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that the Russian people have no equal when united. Right now, there is a battle on our historical borders for our people. It is being fought by the same courageous fighters who are now standing next to us, Putin said, while shaking hands with a soldier standing on stage. Putin's speech today surprised me. It was a very short one and I expected it would be much longer. By suspending Russia's participation in the START treaty, Vladimir Putin has used the last safe trump card for him in the nuclear blackmail of the West, Europravda journalist Ole Pavlio claims. Dmitry Medvedev, deputy head of the Security Council of the Russian Federation, called the suspension of the treaty an overdue decision and said Russia will use any weapon to defend itself, giving more weight to Pavlyuk's claim. And to wrap up the news segment, the international developments. The United States will be providing Ukraine with long-range GPS-guided bombs made by Boeing Corporation that is capable of hitting targets about 70 kilometers away. 48 hours before the first anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Spanish Defense Minister Margarita Robles has confirmed that the country will hand over six repaired Leopard 2A4 battle tanks to the Ukrainian army. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has threatened to veto the extension of EU sanctions against Russia, which must be renewed every six months. Later, it was reported that the EU failed to agree on the 10th package of sanctions against Russia during the meeting today. Initially, it was planned to introduce the package before the anniversary of the full-scale invasion. Meanwhile, the Hungarian foreign minister called for an immediate ceasefire in Ukraine and direct talks between the US and Russian presidents to end the war. 
President Joe Biden said on Wednesday that Russian President Vladimir Putin made a big mistake by suspending his country's participation in the last remaining US-Russia nuclear arms control treaty. Andriy Yermak, head of the Ukrainian president's office, has suggested that the UK could be the first country to unblock the supply of Western fighter jets to Ukraine. China's foreign ministry said the country is not considering supplying Russia with weapons for use in its war against Ukraine, accusing the United States and NATO of spreading falsehood about Beijing's potential role in the war. The Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, may come to Ukraine in the near future. The matter is under consideration. German Brigadier General Christian Freuding said that the armed forces of Ukraine are hitting Russian logistics points and command posts with precision, forcing the enemy to disperse its structures. This in turn is stretching Russia's supply lines. On Ukraine he stated that the country is in a difficult phase as the military is no longer able to reconstitute its units with volunteers only, but is now actively recruiting reservists. And now for the intelligence report segment, starting as usual with the UK Ministry of Defence. On February 21st, 2023, President Putin made his first State of the Nation speech since 2021. He made it clear that he intends to continue with the special military operation in Ukraine. He characterized Western elites as having become a symbol of total unprincipled lies and suspended Russia from the New START treaty. Putin continued the bellicose tone he has adopted in speeches over the last six months, but did not reveal any practical measures which might relieve Russia's current deadlock on the battlefield. Putin continues to present a contradictory narrative of existential struggle while insisting everything in Russia is fine and going to plan. This renders both messages ineffective. A look at the latest assessment by the Institute for the Study of War. Regarding Putin's State of the Nation address, the analysts commented, Russian President Vladimir Putin's February 21st address to the Russian Federal Assembly did not articulate specific goals or intentions for the war in Ukraine, instead reinforcing several long-standing rhetorical lines in an effort to buy Putin more space and time for a protracted war. Many Russian mill bloggers condemned Putin's failure to use his speech to forward new war aims, outline new measures to support the war, or hold Russian authorities accountable for their many military failures. While mill bloggers and officials who attended the speech in person expressed positive or neutral support, others harshly criticized it as boilerplate and without meaningful action. Igor Gurkin especially complained that Putin did not have anything important to say for 40 minutes while omitting Russia's military defeats, military failures and economic downturn. Gurkin also lamented the failure to hold Russian officials accountable for the situation. The Institute further wrote that the Kremlin may be directing patronage programs led by Russian regions to consolidate socio-economic control in the occupied Ukrainian territories. Vladimir Putin referenced the program in his February 21st speech, saying that Russian regions are providing direct support for cities, districts and villages in occupied areas, according to the report. The researchers further commented on the involvement of Tumen regional authorities in projects in Russian-occupied parts of Luhansk and Donetsk oblasts. The commitment of regional resources to consolidate economic and social control over the occupied territories matches earlier assessments by the Institute. Referencing the investigative reporting on the Kremlin's alleged plan to take over Belarus by 2030, the researchers argued that the findings are consistent with the Institute's long-term research and assessment about the Kremlin's campaigns. NATO must develop plans to account for the likely Russian-controlled Belarus, the report added. And to wrap up the report, the evening update by the General Staff of Ukraine. The Russian Federation continues to wage full-scale armed aggression against Ukraine. The enemy concentrates its main efforts on conducting offensive actions in the Kupiansk, Liman, 
Bakhmut, Avdivka and Shakhtarsky directions and increases the number of personnel. The locations are marked here with numbers. An enemy sabotage and reconnaissance group was discovered in the Bolohivka region. As a result of the fire effect of units of the defense forces, the enemy retreated to the territory of the Russian Federation. The enemy carried out several unsuccessful offensives in the Kupiansk and Liman directions. He also made an attempt to infiltrate a sabotage and intelligence group in the Fiolivka area. In the Bakhmut direction, the enemy continues to attack the positions of our troops near the settlements of Ohivo Vasilivka, Dubovo Vasilivka, Berhivka, Yahidne, and Bakhmut. In the Avdivka and Shachtarske directions, the occupiers launched an unsuccessful offensive near Novo Bakhmutivka, Vodanje, Nevelske, Marinka, and Prechistivka. The Russian occupiers are using the local infrastructure in the temporarily occupied part of the Zaporizhia Oblast for their own purposes, in particular for the purpose of their own enrichment. For example, at one of the service stations in the city of Tokmak, the invaders not only service their military equipment, but also disassemble cars stolen from the local population into spare parts for further sale. And that wraps up today's report. As usual, you can find links to the articles I mention in the description, in case you want to read up on the details. If you enjoyed the report and found it informative, please consider sharing it with others. Thank you for tuning in and have a great day. You were listening to The Account. Slava Ukraini.